hi guys welcome back to my channel so i know it's been a minute actually it's been a very long minute the last video i posted was in june and i haven't posted since because since then i've had my baby so if you didn't know i was pregnant and now i've had my baby and he i had a baby boy and he is almost three months a lot has happened and continue to happen we are just you know rolling with the punches and as you know motherhood is fulfilling but also difficult at the same time so yeah i just thought this was the the right time to come and share my positive birth story with you i also want to say a big welcome to my new subscribers when i posted my last video i think i had about 4500 and now we're well over 7000 so thank you so much and welcome also if you've not subscribed yet please subscribe and hit the notification button so you will get a notification every time i post a new video i shared um i think in april that i was pregnant and i was due on the 29th of june and let me tell you on the 29th of june nothing happened i literally woke up took a shower did my makeup and recorded a video so baby did not come and obviously i got really desperate because if he if he didn't come the next week um i would have had to be induced and i wanted a natural labor i didn't want any uh, medication so it was important for me to to go into labor naturally so that everything can also happen naturally or that i'll have the best chance of having a natural non-medicated birth up until my due date i had been very lazy i hadn't gone for many walks but what i was doing that i was doing my floor exercises i was doing stretches i was making sure that i was doing all the pelvic floor exercises hip stretches so i was good in that area but any sort of like rigorous exercise i did not do i was so lazy and i recently shared on my instagram that i had miscarried before this pregnancy so i was very um weary of doing anything like too rigorous i basically just didn't do anything for a whole year I literally just sat on my bum which was really bad and i think that's why i missed my due date so since that day i went for walks twice and they were like really fast power walks and i had to do that every day for six days and my baby came on the seventh day so on the 5th of july which is the day before um i went into labor I had really mild contractions. I actually went to my um, my sister-in-law's um, birthday barbecue, and whilst we were there, I'd feel you know it come on, but it was bearable, nothing serious, and that was fine. So that was that, and I kept saying that the baby was gonna come the next day. The baby was gonna come the next day. So that morning, I went to to sleep, and then woke up at three thirty went to use the bathroom and then i saw that my mucus plugged had come away and i read somewhere that once your mucus plug comes away labor is definitely underway so once that happened i tried to go back to bed and it wasn't happening so I was in bed from about 3.30 to around 5, half 5 and then I just got up and then came downstairs to sit on the birth ball or the exercising ball just to cope with the contractions. So I laboured at home from 3.30 in the morning up till 8pm when we left for the hospital. So what I used during my labour to cope with the, um, with the contractions was the birth ball i started with the birth ball but it got to a point that the birth ball was not working anymore so i moved to the bath so my mom ran me a bath around seven what are you doing baby you're showing the whole internet my goodies don't do that please so my mom ran me a bath around seven to eight a.m 
and I used the bath up until around 2 p.m. So I was in and out of the bath eating and then my husband would come in, help me count. And then every time I had the contractions, I would go on all fours because I found that it really helped. So I was doing that all day. We called the hospital around, around that same time, around 2. And then they said that we couldn't come in because my contractions were not like consistent. I wasn't getting three consecutive contractions, contractions in 10 minutes within one hour. So I wasn't allowed to come in until that happened. So around five, six, I had my first three contractions in an hour. We called the hospital, they said I couldn't come in, I should do another hour, just to really make sure that I was in active labor before coming. So that happened and then now the contractions were more frequent and constant. So around uh, eight o'clock we called the hospital and then they were asking us questions and then they were like okay so has your water broken and as soon as she asked my husband whether my water had broken my water broke in that moment it wasn't a big gush as it as it seems in like movies and stuff it was just a little trickle um but then i did not know that that wasn't it you know, I thought maybe that was it, but there was more. So they said that we could come to the hospital now. So we then left for the hospital around 8 p.m. And that ride to the hospital was probably like the worst ride of my life. My husband was just trying to like get there as quickly as possible. So, Cause I think he was worried that I would have the baby in the car. But honestly, it never even crossed my mind that I could have the baby in the car this is me in the back like no slow down because honestly i felt everything every bump everything was so painful I, and and i was like don't try to get there quickly just drive as normal as possible and honestly we were so lucky because when we got to the hospital we found out that my water wasn't fully broken and honestly if my if my water had fully broken at home i would have probably had the baby in the car so thank god for that so when we got to the hospital we got to the hospital around 8 30 pm and if you know during this pandemic because of coronavirus um birthing moms are only allowed one birthing partner and that birthing partner is not allowed in in the delivery room or even to to like enter the hospital unless the mother is in active labor so active labor as in she's ready to push so i checked in the hospital at the reception so they said that my husband couldn't come so he goes back to the foyer with my mom and i go um into the into whichever room that they've assigned to me and i asked the reception do you not want my birth plan and they said no so I was like okay that's interesting so I go into the room and I was waiting for 30 minutes to be seen and honestly it was the longest 30 minutes of my life I was laid on my back and that was the worst for contra for the contractions because they hurt more um because being on on all fours was what really helped me so those 30 minutes was really 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 bad for me I don't know why it took so long to be seen so when the nurse finally came she attached all these stuff to me checking for baby's heartbeat so they did that for 30 minutes and then they checked myself then i think about nine o'clock the doctor came she checked my cervix she said my water wasn't fully broken so she broke my water and then there was like a big gush <laughs> and then she said that i was fully dilated but then after that they said that i couldn't push just yet because i still had a bit of cervix there so i don't understand really what happened whether i was eight centimeter dilated or ten centimeter dilated i don't know but i felt the need to push the whole time so they after they broke my water checked my cervix they then said that i could call my husband and then we'd go to the labor and delivery room but i wouldn't be able to push until 11. so it was around 10 now so we went to the room i called my husband he came and um so remember i said before that they didn't ask to see my birth plan what are you doing <laughs> so 
they didn't know what I wanted so when I went the chair or the bed was sort of like it, it, it it had a back that could be adjusted based on how upright you wanted to be and it was quite low for me but if they had read my birth plan they would have known that i wanted to be on all fours i didn't want to um to push lying on my back um and i wanted a non-medicated birth but because nobody asked for it, nobody knew and they were telling me that i couldn't push until an hour and i look at the clock and it was 10 20 and i say to myself i cannot wait till 11 i need to push so i just lie in there i said i need to push i need to push so then they then lifted the the cloth from down there and they had the look and everybody then started like rushing trying to get everything ready because i was the baby was crowning then so i actually had the opportunity to touch it because i was just curious so i touched it baby was crowning which was amazing so before i pushed i said can i have this bed you know pushed pushed a bit more forward because i don't want to lie back um so yeah they adjusted it so i pushed basically sat up with my legs up and by half 10 my baby was here and i i did it within four pushes which was amazing so i had my baby and honestly the first time i heard him so cry well, it was so surreal honestly See? even well just done, now i know i keep saying honestly you <laughs> did Sorry. good even just Aww, now i was fingers. thinking about oh my gosh I can't believe i'm going baby, baby. I know, I know. every time it's, 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 it's just crazy well done, and baby. being a first time mom and being pregnant in a pandemic yes. nobody saw me i was just pregnant by myself so the whole time sometimes i didn't even forget that i was pregnant until i walked into something so hearing that first cry was amazing my husband was amazing he was encouraging me and also I had my eyes closed for the whole time and all I could hear was my husband's voice going you can do it Jay just a few more pushes just thinking back to it just knowing that he was there with me and just you know a familiar face I don't know how I could have done it without him thanks to my husband for being there and the gas and air was amazing guys but the funny thing about my gas and air was every time I I like took a breath it made this horrible noise I was like it's supposed to sound like this but I didn't care it was so good it really did help with the pain and one thing about gas and air is you have to use it only when you need it if you use it when you don't need it it's sort of like it stops working so I made sure to only use it when I needed it and it worked amazingly for me so I did tear I got a second degree D degree tear which was stitched up after i had the baby so that was that i didn't expect to tear but i am even surprised i was able to to push this baby out and he was seven pounds and 13 ounces so yeah are you agreeing with me <laughs> because i had the baby at night we had to wait for the nurse in the morning who checks over baby before you leave the hospital so had the baby at 10 p.m and then we were discharged next morning around nine o'clock one thing that i am really grateful for is the fact that i was able to stay with my husband if i had been moved to the ward he would have had to leave it would have just been me and baby so i'm quite grateful for that so even when they came and moved us around 4 a.m in the morning they still moved us to another room where we were by ourselves and i think the reason why um i didn't move to the ward was because i was awaiting my covid results and also i just think they didn't have enough beds so that worked out perfectly being that we're in a pandemic this is a separate video just to touch on the things that i forgot so remember that i said before that i used the bath and the birthing ball a lot to deal with the contraction pains well i used a lot of breathing exercises as well i have no idea how i forgot about breathing exercises because literally that is all 
that got me through my labor i watched a lot of videos from bridget taylor i'll put her details below she is a doula and she has a lot of videos on all the different breathing techniques for like the, the different parts of labor so that was really helpful in between the bath and the birthing ball i also had to use the toilet seat some contractions came with this feeling of wanting to go you know do number two and i think that is one of the signs that you're in labor some some people feel sick and others pretty much get diarrhea so i had diarrhea with some contractions the contractions were so painful and i found that sitting and facing the toilet do you know like say if you're sitting on a chair and you sat facing the chair instead of your back towards the chair that i found so much comfort in that position it helped me a lot also just before we went to the hospital the pain became unbearable and i mean unbearable like nothing worked the ball did not work the bath stopped working and i remember just before we left around 8 p.m i actually started crying with each contraction that came because it was that painful and like the weirdest thing happened in the sense that myself and my mom were not like really touchy but when i was in labor every time i got the surges i'd get on all fours and i remember just crawling up to her and like she rubbed her hands in my hair and i'm telling you that felt so good <laughs> it felt so good and it's just you know when you when something happens that you never thought that you needed that was just like so i so after that i kept telling my husband to run his hand in my hair because it was just so nice and it just comforted me so much so from then we went to the hospital one thing that i'm not really happy about with my labor was the fact that nobody asked to see my birthing plan and because nobody asked to see it, I felt like a lot of it could have gone wrong. I'm happy that it didn't, but it could have gone very, very wrong because nobody knew what I wanted. One of my requests in my birthing plan was that they that they guide the baby's head when the baby's head popped out because my mom told me that because my mom used to be a midwife, so she was telling me that usually they guide the baby's head after it comes out the first time and that helps women not tear so that did not happen they didn't do that they basically didn't do anything that i wanted done which was quite upsetting and i actually plan to complain to like put an official complaint in because that is just not right um also the first question i asked after i had my baby was if i did a number two in the process just before you push you get the sensation of pooing so a lot of people actually end up pooing but that did not happen to me but i hope i've filled in the bits that were missing <laughs> i know the story is all over the place but you get the gist so yeah he will soon be three months and we're so grateful for him aren't we yeah we love him so much and i'm just i'm just so grateful to god to to be able to have an unmedicated birth no complications my pregnancy was fine nothing bad happened and i was able to have my baby safe and we're well and for all that to happen in a pandemic i am extremely blessed so before i had the baby i was also quite worried about the labor and what helped me was um me learning about the body and how we are actually you know made like we were created to do this like our bodies was made for this so learning about the whole process really helped curb my my fear 
of the labor process and also doing my exercises so i did a lot of um pelvic floor exercises a lot of stretches hip stretches and i think that helped me a lot one thing i didn't do was walking so i would advise that you do all your exercises and learn a bit more about the process if you're scared would i do the non-medicated birth again i probably would because as as painful as it was um it wasn't too bad so being that we're in a pandemic it was important for me to go the non-medicated route because i believe the less medication i get the less likely i will be to, to stay in the hospital and to have all these things strapped on me so definitely do your research and do what's best for you i also just want to share the story to encourage anyone who is pregnant at this time you know my heart goes out to you i hope you're well just staying safe and basically doing all you can to to make sure that you're you're keeping well mentally as well as physically so yeah thank you so much if you've sat through this and if you've got any more questions about my birth or if there's anything that i've left out let me know in the comment section and i will answer any of your questions thank you and i shall see you in my next video and until next time it's goodbye from myself and little baby cj so bye say bye say bye i get to say bye <laughs> Bye! <laughs>